Gerai, pažiūrėsim, dar nesibaigė, pažiūrėsim tą šitą video. Did Israel steal Palestinian land? Um. In my years as a leftist activist, I used to have an argument that I thought would end any pro-Israeli argument. It was an argument that to me made very clear why Palestinians were on the right side. And this argument was actually a picture. This argument was Plačia ne tas pats šivakas, kur pas Channel 5 kalbėjo. Series of maps. And we see these maps. Na, visi matėm tos žemėlapius. They supposedly show us that through the years Israel is grabbing more and more land from the Palestinians. So this is the first episode in our supplementary series trying to shed some light in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the question we will discuss today is has Israel actually stolen Palestinian land and our vehicle for answering this question will be this very famous I would call it meme but it's not just a meme because this series of maps has appeared in reputable publications and as you will see in, in, on your screen, but also this series of maps, the, the so-called the diminishing Palestine or shrinking Palestine maps, has also been used by the Palestinians themselves. So, for example, we see the president of the Palestinian Authority is pointing out these maps as an exam, as a proof of the historical, of the alleged historical injustice against the Palestinians. So with me today is Elan Zurno, who will help me understand what we are seeing in these maps. So let's break it down. Let's start from the first map that shows the area, the wider area, before 1947. And what I see here, Elan, is a few Jewish settlements and everything else supposedly belongs to the Palestinians. So is this an accurate representation of what was happening? No, this map is fundamentally dishonest. I think it's designed to fool people and create a narrative that is far from the truth. So we should go panel by panel through this map, and it's good to start with this first panel. But I think it's important to say, to answer your question, did Israel steal the land? The answer is no. It did not steal the land. And I think there's more... Be, yeah, yeah, that's what the Pavogia Zemia is like absurd. And I just want to assume that he said that the Israelis were the same and that they were the same as the Israelis, the Israelis, the Israelis, the West Bank and the same as the Talabiu. What do you think the answer is? But... But if you... Pavogės, nu, žemė čia, nu, ne. Pala, ten buvo komplikuota istorija, bet po antro pasaulyje Britai liktais davė žemę ir tada nusiplovė maždaug tvarkykitės kaip norit, jo. Kai, kai žydus ten visi naikino maždaug, sako, davai, varykit čia tada, jums teritorija ir jie tenais iš viso pasaulio pabiškai varė, varė, varė. Kadangi ten anksčiau gyveno palestiniečių visokių, nu, tipo, dabar palestiniečių, jie nepatenkinti buvo, nes čia žiūrėkit, tie žydai atvarė dideliai skaičiais. Ir ten konfliktas tęsės, bet istorija mano tragiška, tai... Va? Ką tu čia parašėjai? ...or to be said about the issue of, is there such a thing as Palestinian land? Is there such a thing as Jewish land? And I think the answer to that is also no. There's land that's owned by individuals. And then you can ask, what is their heritage? What is their background? What is their religion? What kind of beliefs do they have? But there is no land that's owned by a collective. And I think that's one of the pieces of context that this kind of map drops. And what the other thing to say as just set up for this map in general, is that this map is an excellent example of a fallacy that Ayn Rand identified called the fallacy of, of dropping context. So knowledge is not atomic. Knowledge is a network. Knowledge is something that's integrated. And if you rip something out of context, we know this from when people rip quotes out of context. That happens all the time. But if you rip knowledge out of context, it is not useful. You can't understand what you're being told. And it's usually used by people who are trying to lie to you or deceive you or trick you in some way. And I think this, is, this map is an excellent case study 
of that fallacy. So let's look at this map. Aš laukiu, aš žinau, liktais, pala, aš liktais mačiau paskutinius keletą dienų streamus, nu, tai yra stream title, Destiny. Jo, man atrodo, aš jau kokias penkias dienas matau, Boring Research Day, History of Israel, Palestine, Conflict. Ir kiek žinau, kad bus paskui keletas debatų Izraelio ir Palestino, kai Destiny perskaitys, tai ten greičiausiai... Nu bent jau aš tikiuosi, kad bus daug daugiau naudingos informacijos negu iš bet kokių tų video. Nes bet ten žmogus, man atrodo, savaitę jau skaito non-stop viską apie tą istorinį konfliktą ir panašiai. Tai bus įdomu iš tikrųjų išgirsti argumentus vat, prieš tam tikrus palestiniečių gal pusės argumentus ir, nu, ir tos pačius Izraelio. Aš nežinau net, nežinau net kokia desnį poziciją yra ar bus. Man atrodo, jeigu reiktų spėti kaip ir didelė dalis vakarų pasaulio, į Izraelio pusę linksta. Plama, lintrovertas atrodo atsiuntė, jo, lintrovertas atsiuntė žiūrį gerą mimą. Dabar yra labai smagu žiūrėti šitą. Labai iš tikrųjų smagu žiūrėti ant kiek leftistai yra tiesiog susirėję Amerikoje ir visur. Ir čia the actual horseshoe theory. Left-right, tipo Biškai eini right, dar palaiko Ukraina, bet biškai toliau eini right ir tu Rusija palaikai. Lygiai taip pat yra left, ukrainiečius palaikai, bet jeigu per tolį left, žiūrėk, ten prada rusus laik, palaikyti visokie tankiai. Tai čia labai accurate. Bet su Izraelio ir Palestina irgi tas pats, tik biškai kita pusė. Kad dahuja leftistų, tiesiog dahuja leftistų, prie Palestine ir panašiai, Tuo tarpu right, dabar žiūrėk Izraelio fanai ir tik tais ekstremalai palėsinė palaiko. Nu, tipo, žiauriai fucking accurate mimos, kaip pat pasitėmė tos grupuotės. Bet aš sakau, bet koks per toli nuėjimas į bet kokią pusę, tiesiog atrodo tragiškų pasiekmių turi. Bet jo, bet jo pasidalinė žmonės labai su šito klausimu, daug labiau dabar negu, nu, kokių ten kitų, bet čia ir komplikuotas. Bet anyway, ten niekas nesigirinė labai daug pasidalina gerai absoliutą video. You ask me about. Ja, bus įdomu, ka ten desini debatuose paskui pasakys ir su kuo iš tikrųjų. Respect the white areas that you're seeing represent settlements, so where people of Jewish extraction are living. What is the what does the green represent? It is certainly not where people live because big parts of this area are unlivable at this time. There's just they're either desert, they're un uninhabitable there they're not agrable land you can't find there's no civilization, civilization, civilization in some parts of these so it's just not true that this is representing the same thing on both sides so what the green is trying to tell you is like this whole area was somehow peopled and the white was peopled and the, those are the two groups we're thinking about but that's not historically true what the green is showing you is a claim for collective ownership and i think the important thing okay. to see here is that there is no such thing And the second thing that's important as a, a sort of a principle that should condition this whole context. Yeah, čia vienas argumentas, kad čia the, the, the joy of the žemių net, nu, čia niekas negyveno ten, nes ten net negyvena Amazonas tipo, nu, vieta, bet tada kitam jums žemėl apie, o ten nebėra, tipo, ten išvarė, bet ten niekas ir negyvena. Nu, tipo, jo, kad ta pieksu, kad visi mati, aišku, kad ten bullshit jau senai, aišku, bet anyway. The idea of this area as belonging exclusively and in, for eternity to the Palestinians is an essential tenant of the Palestinian cause. It is not a claim that has that has existed before the cause in any meaningful way. So what we hear, we're going to liberate Palestine from the river to the sea, we're going to own it for eternity in Allah's name. Those are the claims you hear from the different Palestinian factions. That is the default position that they take, that there is no speck of land that the Israelis can live on that is legitimately held by them. So every presence, the presence of every Israeli, of every home, of every factory, of every shop is illegitimate by that fact. So what this map is actually doing is smuggling in the Palestinian cause perspective that there is no size for Israel that's legitimate. And I think that's an important piece of the context that is pushed and pushed out of the picture. And you're, you're made to think, well, look at all these people who are living here. And then this, this small dots of white somehow comes and takes over like some sort of infection. Aš nežinau, aš nesėku jūsų čia čato, bet tipo jūs apie Rusiją dabar kalbat, kad tipo ką čia Rusija nugalėsim ir gerai gyvensim, ar panašiai ir panašiai. Ką turbūt galima išmokti iš istorijos ir netgi iš Izraelio ir Palestinos konflikto, kad jeigu tu nori kažkada, kad actually ne nekestų tave žmonės, ne netunuotų tą mintis pas žmonės, kad kažkada tau atkeršis ar panašiai, tu negali jų uždaryti, įdėžutė, 
ir laukti, kol jie pasikeižinai, arba kol pritars, kol nustos būtų rodais, kad tas tiesiog neveikia. Tai ką aš jau esu kalbėjęs, ne kartą, tipo, jo, valio, mes nu, dabar kaip ir turim tą sieną uždaryti, viską čia suprantama, tipo. bet kuo daugiau Rusija ten nu, uždarom į dėžutę, nieks nepasikei, žmonių, širdžių tu nepajimsi, o kaip tik tu dar labiau įrodysi jiems, kad ai, pasirodo mūsų valdžia, tipo, kur sako, kad Amerika ten blogis be laisvų, tai jie nemelavo, nežiūrėk dabar, Amerika ten ir vakarai mums neleidžia niekur judėti, nieko daryti, niekur gyventi ten, niekur nesileidžia, mužiūri kaip urodus, nu, tipo, tu nepaliek jiems nesigažydas blogas. Ir tada buvo lūžęs, jo. Na, nu, čia... Dabar jau nebeturėtų laginti, jo. Dabar jau bitreitas eina, čia nežinau, ar Twitch'as ar man internetas buvo kimirkai, bet dabar bitreitas eina stabiliai, tai dabar turėtų būti. Jo. Uh, tai, ok, kur aš baigiau? Tai jo, žodžiu, jeigu už, uždarai į va tokią dėžutę, labai lengva bus tiem žmonėm ta, iš tavęs padaryti, nu, tą blogėti ir jie tikės, aišku, nes, nu, akivaizdu jiems. Tai aš sakyčiau, kaip ir aš esu kalbėjęs, kad jeigu mes vieną dieną kažkaip tikimės pakeisti rusus, nu, tipo, kaip kaip Vokietija gal kažkada pasikeitė kažkiek tarkim, aš nežinau, nu, tipo, tu turi parodyti jiems geresnį gyvenimą, geresnę santvarką. Tu turi juos įtikinti, parodomas, kad gali būti geriau, žinai. Aišku, užkatėjusiems ten sovietų fanams, tu nieko to nepadarys, bet jau greitai mirs. Bet tu turi parodyti, kad demokratija yra geriau, tu turi parodyti, kad draugystė, ryšiai, tu yra geriau. O kaip ta parodyti, tu turi jiems gyvenimą pagerinti. Tu turi actually pagerinti gyvenimą, kad, kad žmogus pajaustų kažkiem gyvenime, kad yra geras gyvenimas. Bet kad tą padaryti, nu, aš nematau, kaip dabar ypač, kai rusų taip nekenčia ir, nu, dar karas nesibaigia. Tai jo, aš nežinau. Bet jo, problema yra ta, kad kuo toliau tęsiasi tas, tuo labiau uždarai juos, tuo labiau nekenčia jų, o jie vidui radikalizuojas labiau ir istorija kartojas. Tai, ai, nu, ir ši čia realiai, vat ką, nu, matėm, čia, aišku, nu, daug labiau komplikuota situacija, bet, nu, vat su tais gaza, ne, uždarė, engė, ok, turėjo tam priešti, turėjo, bet uždarė, engė. Nu, jo. Ir tada galų gali va tokią terorą ataką Hamas padaro ir tada slepės už tų žmonių, kurie yra indoktrinuoti. Civiliai, bet tipo ar tikrai didžioji dauguma nuo mokyklos laikų mokomi, kad žaidai yra blogis. Nu, tipo, ok, ir jos turi nelygų žudyti. Nu, tipo, fucked up. Gerai, Rantas baigia, žiūrim toliau. And that's, and I use that because there's often that kind of dehumanizing perspective that comes into the Palestinian narrative. So this map is fundamentally misrepresenting the facts on the ground at the time, and it's deliberately, I think, ambiguous between political uh, population and what actually was going on in terms of the land. And also, of course, for thousands of years, that land, the whole of the land, was part of empires. So at that point, so after the fall of the Ottoman Empire, the British took it over for some time. So there was no, let's say, Palestinian state, to put it simple. Now, let us move yeah, just one more thing on this. Because, sorry, yeah, yeah, because one, more I just want to jump in one more thing on this, which is it's really important. So I said unequivocally that Israel did not steal the land and it's not the topic for today. Today, we're going to focus on this map. But one important thing to say about this issue is there is documented history of how the, the incoming Jews acquired the land. Now, we have most of that evidence. There might be cases where you could say the land was stolen. I don't think that's the predominant factor. What actually happened, and this is something I talk about in my book, what justice demands America and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We have reams of evidence of how the land was acquired through purchase, trade, exchange of value for value. Now, you might go back and, and dispute some of those uh, transactions. You might say this is not a fair price, but it, that's an important part of the story. So where you see these white settlements, those were acquired either individually or through consortiums where money was raised in Europe and other parts of the world. <clears throat> in order to acquire the land. So there's a whole history here that, again, this is an example of dropping a context, whereas that is part of what you would need to know in order to assess the claim that this map is pushing about stolen land. But sorry for cutting in. Why don't you proceed? It's okay. That's very, very, that's very, very important, what you just said. So let's go then to the second part of the map. So here we are in 1947 going to 1948. So what happened then is that the United Nations, so at some point, the, the, the British uh, colonial forces, okay, we give up, we can't figure out what will happen here because there was already violence in, in, in the land. 
And then the United States comes up with a partition plan and says there's going to be two states, the Israeli state and an Arab state for the Arab population, which would be what we see there with green as the Palestinian land. So notice, of course, that this is a plan which already Israel is smaller than it would hope. Ir, ir buvo tipo o tas Jeruzalėje, jo tas tipo, nu, neutrali kaip taip atrodo buvo sutarė, todėl čia geltona pažymėta, tipo tos tas pirmas turimas buvo. Because at some point years earlier it was promised an even bigger part that would include what today would call uh, Jordan. And but Israel says even with this relatively small piece of land again most in the south is, is desert, Israel says we are okay. So what is very important here is to notice that there would have been a Palestinian state if the Arabs at that point said, okay, we get this deal. How did the Arabs react? They reacted by uh, declaring war to Israel literally the day Israel declared its independence, which was the day that officially the British uh, mandate on the area expired. So. Elan, any comments on the new on the UN partition plan? Is there anything of interest uh, here? Yeah, notice how this map now is about sovereignty of, a, of nation states versus population distribution. So this is a very different kind of map. Colors are the same. That's something you should notice if you're trying to evaluate this map as a tool for thinking. Why is there no signal that that's the change? Okay, so now the other thing about this is it's at least honest up to this point. This is a plan. This never came to fruition for the reason that you mentioned that it, immediately a war erupted within this area. And then shortly afterwards, foreign nations uh, uh, neighboring invaded with the goal not to impose the UN plan and rescue it, but the opposite, to completely overturn the idea of the UN plan, whatever its merits. And you could debate the merits of this UN plan. It wasn't the first plan for partition, but it was the one that went into effect under the vote. Those foreign nations that came in we're not, and this is important, we're not there to make sure that the, the population of Arab and Palestinians, and, and we have to talk about what that means, that population was not their concern. Their concern was to take over this territory and make it either part of Syria, part of Egypt, part of Jordan, part of, I mean, even the Iraqi sent people and the Saudi sent people to fight in this contest, so in this conflict. So th there was really a, a grab, an attempt to grab the land. And if you were thinking about if you were really concerned about the idea of a Palestinian state and what happens after 47 and why didn't it why didn't it come to fruition the point you raised about it being rejected is important the point that the, the second point that's important is the fact that the supposed champions of this idea were not interested in it and they came in and, and made it worse and, and uh, whatever Palestinians there were who wanted a, a state that would have been uh, part of this UN deal, they were prevented from pursuing that because of the invasion of those foreign powers. And then the final point I would raise here is there's a deeper philosophic issue over and above the history and the politics. And that one, again, is part of the context that's dropped and deliberately dropped and evaded. And that is, yes, the UN voted for a partition. And you can, you can cling to that if you're on the side of the Israelis and say, look, we, we were on the, the right side of this decision. And you can point fingers and say the Palestinians were not and so forth. And that's fine. But the deeper question is, should there have been any partition? Should there have been any state for Israel and any state for the Palestinians and the mm -hmm. Arabs in the area? And that's the philosophic question. And I, I actually think the, the, the Israelis deserve to have a state because they were moving in the direction of a state that would have, that, that did and does now enable people to live in freedom and prosper and build and, and produce. Whereas what I think would have been expected of the Palestinian state is the opposite. It's what you see in all the neighboring regimes, which is their authoritarian monarchy, monarchies or theocracies, and not at all conducive to human life. We don't know what that would have looked like. Oh, actually, we do know because the history, as we'll see, does point to what the Palestinian state looks like. But that's an important issue. What are the conditions? What are the moral pre uh, premises that make it make your claim to statehood valid or invalid? And that's just completely. Kokie yra pagrindiniai argumentai prieš tą zajonizmą, prieš tai, kad, nu, tipo, žydė turėtų savo atskirą šalį? Kokius argumentus naudoja? Ir šiaip gan weird, kad, nu, tarsi, kaip, nu, religija, tautybė, ne, religija gal labiau gauna savo šalį, kind of weird, bet tada, kai juos visas pasaulis bandė žudyti holokausto ten metu ir panašiai, tai not weird, nežinau. Completely ignored here. So we start with map one where everything is Palestine except for this white growth, which is Jewish settlements. Then we, this, the white growth increases and the Palestinian decreases and it's shrinking. And oh no, how, how could this possibly be the right way this should be going? 
this is a problem. No, the real question here is, what are the conditions that human beings need in order to live in a society? What is a good society? What is a just society? That's the principle that should govern who is entitled to a claim to statehood and for, and for what kind of state. And that is completely ignored. And it's important for people looking at this map to ask themselves, why is that question not being put on the table? Why is it being pushed out of the way so that I, I'm led to think that the Palestinians are being victimized by this white growth on the map labeled Israel? That's an important question anyone who's touting this map should be answering. And Elan, just to clarify something, because there might be people out there with bad faith and they will say, so what you're actually saying is that you, you would know already from 1947 that the Arabs in the area would not be able to create a state that will uh, do what is the function of a state, what should be the function of a state, which is to, to, to support uh, the rights of its citizens. And the answer is, Yes, we knew it already then, and it has nothing to do with any ethnic origins. It had to do with their ideas. It had to do with their ideologies. All the surrounding states, all the Arab leaders, actually the goal was to throw the Jews to the sea. And that's not an exaggeration. That was an actually recorded and an actually the official goal. So why do we, why do I, at least I claim that it's questionable whether the Arabs should have taken a state, and you say maybe they shouldn't, is because of what they were up to already. So it has nothing to do with the fact that uh, they are Arabs or the others are Jews. The question is, the government that you are about to install there, will it function in the way a government should function? And I think this is something very original that we bring to the table, that uh, objectivists bring to the, to the table, that this is not about ethnicity. So who was there 2,000 years ago? Why did the Jews have a state and the Arabs have not a state? The question is, what type of government are you going to install there? Anyway, let us go to the third map. So what happens actually, as we said, is many neighboring Arab nations attack Israel. Israel actually loses 1% of its population in the war of 1948, in its independence war. Some of these people had just came back from the Holocaust, having survived the Holocaust, and yet Israel wins. Israel defeats... Chat, chat, uh, but boy, the Jaws is story in the No, well, not the Jaws, but what, what the fuck moment is? Holocaust, you know, Jidu, Jidu. Then, look, you can see the event. Okay, so you can see all of them from the pool, from the whole pool. And then they are lame. The fuck now? <laughs> How? But it's true. It's true that they are lame. I don't know, I'm going to do it, but... Yeah, your spoiler, spoiler, it's going to be gone and gone forever. Uh, these uh, foreign armies. And now the state of Israel is expanded to what we see now, this white area. Now, before I go to Elan, let me say for me what jumps out as a big lie in this map. So from 1949 to 1967, in 1967 we have the Six Day War, so we, we're going to talk in a bit about that. What is portrayed here is that the green area is Palestine, which is a huge lie. Elan alluded to it earlier. The wannabe conquering Arab armies did, wa did not want to create a Palestinian state. They wanted to grab whatever they could for themselves. So what you see there called Palestine, on what is today we call it the West Bank, was an area that was occupied by Jordan. And what did the Jordanian army, actually that was the area of the Arab Legion fighting, what did they do there? Atrocities. They expelled every Jew and they destroyed the synagogues. And did they then declare this part of land to be Palestine? Of course not. This was Jordan. And the Gaza on the left, Nu, čia tas viršui bent jau labai labai, nu, abudu šiaip labai labai smarku argumentą dėsto, kad Palestina tokia kaip niekad neegzistavo. Gal jie norėtų egzistuoti, bet jie negali sakyti argumentų, kad mūsų žemė pavogė, ar tenais tai buvo mūsų žemė, nes jie niekad neturėjo savo žemės, nes tokios kaip valstybės, kaip Palestina niekad nebuvo. Nu, aišku, čia kalbu apie tą žemėlapį, nu, kas sakau, jau, nu, esu girdėjęs, kai jis visko nesąmonė, bet čia, paaiškina, kodėl, taip, bet, nu, iš jų pats stipriausias šia argumentas, kad toks dalykas net neegzistavo. ...towards the sea, this was part... Of Egypt. Nieko nesuprantu, jūs dėliokit mintis normaliai, bet aš per tekstą nesuprantu, ką jūs sakot. 
But the question is, how did we end up with refugees in our hands? Well, we ended up with refugees because of the aggressive war of 1948. And many refugees actually left under the command, under the advice of the Arab leaders. So, Elan, I wanted to set some very basic historical context because I think the, particularly this segment of the, of the map is actually enraging in how it... Uh, it, 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 how it... Thank you very much for the next question. I just want to say that I Kur ten kaip o Otomanų imperijos, kas ten whatever, kai, kai jinai sugriuvo, šitos teritorijos buvo, nu, valdomos kaip ir skirtingų, tarkim, vis šalių ir, nu, pagrindė buvo arabiškos žemės, bet nebuvo Palestinos valstybės ar kažko, buvo tiesiog, nu, vienos ar kitos, kaip sumėt, čia dabar šitą zoną, tai kur čia čia žalia, tai Džiord, Džiordanija buvo kupuota ar panašiai, bet tipo maždaug šitaip, bet tada po antro pasaulinio, kiek aš supratau, Nu, ten Britai ir panašiai davė, kaip ir tą oficialiai, nes jie kontroliavo tą, davė e, žydams, kad savo valstybę kurtų, maždaug kurtų nusiplovė. Bet, nu, tas pagrindis argumentas, kad čia nebuvo niekad Palestina, kurios tipo šaliai kažkaip okupavo ar dar kažką, niekad tokios neegzistavo. Čia, nu, taip sako, o kad jų ten daug, nu, nes žmonės laiką gyveno. Tie žmonės, tie arabai visokie tenais ir panašiai, kur vienos ar kitos ten kontroliuojami buvo, jie save vadina tipo palestiniečiais, I guess. A, aš nežinau, mano istorija, aš čia susimau, man atrodo, ką jie pasakė. Completely defies reality. But what's your take on it? Be, šia, bet kur galiu klysti, I have no I fucking idea. I think the idea. important piece that's being dropped here from the context is what you mentioned, which is that the Jordanian regime governed what is known as the West Bank, the big green part, and the Egyptians controlled what is the Gaza Strip. And neither was particularly motivated to support Palestinian statehood as a goal. They actually were opposed to it. The Egyptians in particular were quite brutal about it. They let the Palestinian factions operate within those areas. They, they didn't completely crush them, but they weren't particularly supportive either. And it would have been a shock to them, to Egypt and to Jordan, to hear that this is Palestinian land because they conquered it and they viewed it as theirs. And this was, so if you showed this map to them at the time, if this were a contemporary map, they would be outraged because this is certainly not the picture that their, their fallen soldiers had fought to, to conquer. I think the other piece of this, which is important, that isn't mentioned and it's not at all what people who push this map want you to think about. Um, again, we're seeing that the outline of the map isn't changing. And Israel, the, the colored in white here, is growing. And, and, and it's, again, it's not, like, this is not representative of population. This is sovereignty. And this is the toggling back and forth between those two is important because what is actually true of the green is that it's very densely populated and it's in both cases, whereas the white is not so. And so it's important to see that uh, continual equivocation over, within the map. And I think the, the point you raised about what kind of state would you build? I agree, that's fundamental here. And that to me is why this isn't ultimately a land question. It's a question of what you would do with the land politically. What kind of society would you build? And we've seen the kind of societies the Palestinian cause has tried to build. And it, it's certainly not an ethnic or racial issue. I think it's important to just amplify your point on that. It's That's not at all how I think about this. People are jurying to shit a situation like that the Palestinians are not like that. And like from the Jewish perspective, no, blin. Holokausto prieš jos vykdo. Kur jie be būtų pasauliai, tremia maždaug žudo, jos blogai žiūri, nu, whatever, tipo, nu, žiaurus dalykas, kur, nu, tip, neįsivaizduojama, netgi, tipo, kaip taip galėjo koordinuotai ir tiesiog, nu, prieš. Ir tada jiem, nu, kaip ir oficialiai, viską duoda jų ten, nu, jiems svarbę žemę, tipo, gražina, mažu kurkit valstybė, jūs čia saugus maždaug, nu, saugus klausukas, bet saugesni, tarkim, negu likusiam pasauliai. Ir jie prada tenais pabiškį varyti. Ir kiekvieną kartą skaitik jie atvaro ten. Ir kažkas vat jos užpuola. Nu vis... E, megina vis pult. Ir tada žiūrėk... E, man atrodo, kiekvieną kartą, kai... Palis, nu, atvaro žydai į tą savo naują Izraelę, ne? Ir tada kažkas iš arabų nepatenkinti, nes ten, nu, čia mano močiutės močiutė gyveno, žinai, nu, ir okei, okay. bet jūs neturit klaimo į tą žemę, nu, galų galia po antrą pasiūrėjus, jūs neturit, britai kontroliuoja ir jūs, nu, gali ten ginštis, bet, nu, jūs neturit klaimo. Izraelis laimi ir tada žiūrėk prieš izraeliečius vėl visam pasauliai, padidėja vėl smurtas. 
Un ten kur jie be būtų? Nes žiūrėkite, tenai jis arabus užmušė. Ok. Ir tada izraeliečiai, tai yra žydai, nu, blėt, dar nesaugiau jaučiasi ir dar daugiau įvaro į Izraelį. Ir tada jų daugiau atvaro vėl, vėlgi, į ten, kur jiems davė žemės, arabai kažkokie kažkur vėl nepatenkinti, vėl jiems smogė, vėl atakuoja, Izraelis vėl laimi, nu, reta lėtina, apsigina, laimi. Vėl ta pat istorija. Vėl išpaliai prieš kitų. Ir nu, realiai, ta nepikanta žydams, realiai žydus sustumė irgi į tą savo šalį. Ir toks kaubas kaip užburtas ratas. Ir, o, jų vis daugiau čia atvaro. Ir tada mes keršėm. Bet realiai daros taip panašu iš to konteksto, kad realiai viskas, ką norėjo žydai, per pasiūnis, nežinau, kiek čia jau metų, siog fucking egzistuot, kad nieks norėtų jų genocidinti. Kad maždaug galit atsipist nuo mūsų, blėt. Ir labai gaila, kad jų tos šventos žemės, blėt, yra iš visų pusių arapai, kur dekančia jų. Nu, tai buvo, what the fuck, kaip jiem egzistuot, ta prasme. Ir atrodo, dabar jau sukūrė savo šalį, turi ten laimėjo karus, ten absurdiškai daug praėjo, turi savo šalį, ir vat pastoviai, vat tie religiniai fanatikai kažkokie vis toksai prakštis su biniai, vis bando jos užmušt visus. Nu, taip, iš tos pusės žiūrint, vat, nu, čia yra tas toks mano labai menkas suvokimas, kodėl aš linkstu vis dėlto į Izraelio pusę. Nes atrodo, nu, ne tik, kad atrodo linkstu į Izraelio pusę. Dabar nepateisnant gal visų dalykų, kaip jie ginas, taip, ką būtėse ginas, nu, techniškai. Bet, nu, ginas, bet ką būtėse ginas, žodžiu, supratot, kad noriu paskaiti labą skriną. Na, jie buvo visą laiką, nu, todėl aš į linkstu atrodo, kad Paskutinis šimta whatever metų jos nori žudyti tiesiog labai daug visokių tikėjimų, religijų, ideologijų. Jie nori tiesiog egzistuoti ir pastoviai jos vis kažkas bando. Vis kažkas bando. Nu, vis kažkas bando. Nu, tipo, ir tas kažkas dažniausiai būna arba tragiška ideologija, arba religija. Nekom kažkom faktiškai neparemta, kai jie čia tvariai, ne savo žemė ar dar kažką. O tiesiog ideologija, kad oi čia tie žydai kaip iš Hitlerio, arba religija tiesiog. Tikėjimas kažkoks saklas, kai ten tokie ir tokie. Nu, ir kaip galima, aš kol, vat, nu, aš nežinau, mano, vat, pozicija yra, kad jo, Izraelis turėtų egzistuoti, istorija vos ne istorijoje buvo parašyta, kad jie privalo jis, ne tik taip neegzistuos. Tipo, arba jie egzistuoja savo šaly, arba jos išžudys kažkas. Arba visose šalyse, nu, pavojus kažkada kyla, kad jos žudys. Nu, po antro pasiūnio gal mažiau buvo, bet vat rodė vis tiek, kad, nu, kiekvieną kartą, kai jie jau Izraeliai atsišaudo prieš jos polančius, visam pasaulyje išpalių vėl prieš jos daugiai, todėl jie visai ir stumės, visai ir keliavo į tą Izraelį savo. Jo, nežinau, toks Fakt up situacija Izraeliui visiškai ir gal čia mano šališkumas, nes aš negaliu tiesiog, nu, Izraelis aišku irgi ten savo tą religiją turi viską, bet jų religija gės nėra tokia kaip tu Hamasu ar panašiai, kad dabar reikia visus žydus išnaikinti. Tipo, aš nematau kaip jo... Gerai, nežinom toliau šodžiu. I think it's a mistake to view it that way. And I think even though the participants on both sides often do view themselves in those terms, it's a mistake. I think it's not the right way to see it. Uh, and I think what we should do is talk about the final map. Or I think that there is one more panel, right? The, the Before 2000... we go to the f- one last comment on this map, one last comment. At least we could say at that point... Pirate Talks, esmė tokia turbūt mano, nu, kaip aš suprantu, jiems niekad nebuvo kažkur saugų. Gal buvo čia prieš... Nu, bet jo niekad nebuvo, ten gal dešimt metų būna koks etapas, saugesnis, bet tipo visą laiką kažkas jos nori užžudyti, tipo ar Izraeliai ar ne, bet Izraelis bent jau eigės sukūrė kažką savo, kur nu kažkiek gali būti bent jau kontroliai, ypač kai, nu, apsiginė karus prieš vi, literaliu visus kaimynus ir ten, nu, yeah, nežinau. Points. Are the areas with the green, are they good neighbors to Israel? And the answer is, of course, no. The green areas are the grounds from which... By the way, what the fuck buvo, kai Britai, kaip suprantų, kontroliavo tą žemę, po antro prasimenu, davė Izraeliui tą žemę, tipo, viskas tvarkoja, kurkit. O kodėl jie nepadėjo jiems užtikrinti? Nu, jis tik atvarė, tipo, aš pradėjo kariauti su visais. Kodėl Britai, taip, ar jie jau buvo karo išvarginti, ar nenorėjo ten veltis? Kodėl Britai nepadėjo užtikrinti kažkaip saugumo? Nu, tipo, jų tai kolonijai buvusi, aš, aš nežinau kaip čia. 
Aš nežinau čia istorijos, kas nors žino tą istoriją, kodėl Britai tiesiog... Fuck that shit. Gal supratau, kad nesu handlins, šiaip nežinau. Jo, aš tikrai širgi dabar galvoju. Britai davė žemę. Nu, I guess davė žemę, bet tipo mes neatsakom žemės sėkmės maždaug. Viskas, ką galim, tai duodžiam. Nes man atrodo, kitose vietose jie išlaikė ir savo karinį prezensą dar ten daug metų paskui ir tą kontrolę prilaikė. Ai, tas sekantis būtent apie tai yra? Aš dar iki jo nedajau. Ok. Ok, gal. Bet jo, aš dabar galvoju, man tos klausimas kilo. Atrodo, jo, nes Britai kiek pala... Po antro prasme, panašiai, jie ten... Kitose teritorijose, nu, prilaikė tą prezensą, ten irgi toli labai, bet kažkodėl ne Izraeli. Taip, ar kad jis... Jo, I guess, pažiūrėsim tą video. Gerai. Bet da jim, these were so-called freedom fighters. Pala, aš nežinau, ar žydai buvo tokie bagoti, kiek aš žinau, kad jie labai daug paramos gavo iš įvairių šalių, nes, nu, kai bandė statytą savo šalį, I'm not sure. Aš nesu tikras dėl šito. Jie nebuvo, kaip suprantu, labai bagoti pradžioj. Bet ten pati žydai labai varė ir bus interesuoti statyti. Nu, atsivežė kažkiek kapitalų, bet paskui, kiek aš suprantu, jiems labai labai daug viskui parmų davė. Beje, palestiniečiams irgi kiek žinau davė da chuje. Bet I am not sure. Vėlgi, mano istorijos žinias. Čia jūs kai klausėt, jūs turėtume tada gal googlinkit ir jeigu ką ir atsakymo pats yra, aš nes aš nežinau. They were starting raids, they were engaged in raids against Israel. Raids that looked a lot like the monstrosities we saw on the 7th of October. Reparacijos turimini reparacijos. And raids to random Israeli communities, to random kibudzis here and there, and then followed by massacres and murder and terrorizing the population. So keep this in mind as we go to the next map. So the next map is the the aftermath of the six-day war of 1967. And of course there's something here which is missing. And this is that After, first of all, in 1967, the Egyptian armies. How much you guys got the Palestinian and go to Pinigu Perka Ginkus or Tunnel Ustata Nepomirishkim? Israel is the ninth largest arm exporter in the world and it has the highest number of billionaires in the Middle East, ranked 18th in the world. In recent years, Israel has had among the highest GDP growth rates. No, yeah, but ne paishkana nu ta pradžiš kur ja gavo kad viskas statyti ta ta pačia ginklų industrija. Bet greičiausiai, kaip sakau, nu, gavo sakiu eido, o gal ir šitie tiesiog investicijos iš pačių žydų, kai kurių ten buvo suinteresuoti, bet pastatė šalį, nu, vat, kur gali ir eksportuoti ir užsidirbti, I guess, taip, maždaug gerai, žiūrim. And from the north, the Syrian army are creating a circle around Israel. And also it's expected that Jordan might enter... Keitas ir Sorošas bus to apudovai. So Israel engages in a preemptive strike, it destroys the Egyptian air force, and then it beats both Egypt and Syria, and Jordan, Jordan enters the war. But that's so not true, Pala, kas not true? Kuri vieta, labai tu turi konkrečiai, nes aš nežinau nieko, aš čia perskaičiau citatą. Kas yra not true? Leads with Jordan, don't end, like it destroys the Egyptian air force, and then it beats both Egypt and Syria, And Jordan, Jordan enters the war, although Israel pleads with Jordan, don't enter the war. So what is missing from this map is that, first of all, after 1967, all these... Oh, Middle East billionaires, kas būtent netisinga ir tada šaltini kokį. ...is white. All this area is occupied by Israel. And also, more area on the south, the Sinai Desert, is occupied by Israel. Now, let us pause here for a second, because this is very important. How did Israel end up occupying the West Bank and Gaza and the Golan Heights. Again, this supposedly legal occupation is key in the narrative of the Palestinians. So why did Israel end up occupying these territories? Remember, in 1967, Israel is fighting a defensive war. The Arab states, Egypt and Syria, were ready to attack Israel. There's very little doubt about that. Also, these areas, the West Bank and Gaza, but also the Golan Heights, were used as points of attack. <laughs> 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 <la
attack by the Arab countries against Israel. So it was a very important security concern for Israel. No, tenho, ar, and remember, camino. Israel pleaded with Jordan, do not enter the war. So if Jordan had not entered the war, the war, the West Bank would not be occupied territories. If Egypt had not planned to attack Israel, the Gaza would not be an occupied territory. And if Syria had an attack, the Golan Heights would not have been occupied territories. So Israel had the right to keep these pieces of land. And how important these pieces of land were for its defense became evident some years later in 1973, where the Golan Heights and the Sinai Desert gave Israel the, strate the strategic depth that it needed to withhold the attack of Egypt and Syria to, to withhold round three of their war against Israel. But Israel, when it realizes that at least some of its adversaries, are, in this case the Egyptians, are interested in a peaceful coexistence, it gives back Sinai. The, 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 it gives back the Sinai. And actually what we see here is that after the 90s, Israel engages in talks with the Palestinians. And actually, it gives administrat some administrative autonomy, some administrative rights in the Palestinians, both in West Bank, this is the dots on, on the center towards the north, but also in Gaza. And actually, since 2005, Israel completely removes itself from Gaza. The results, we see them today because a year later in 2006, Hamas gets control of the Gaza. And also something important, around that time, there are two offers to the Palestinians for a two-state solution. One offer by Clinton and Ehud Barak around the, the Camp David, and another in 2008. Neutral people claimed that these were good deals, but the Palestinians did not take them. So this is my historical context for this last map. So Elan, you wanted to talk more about this map. What draws your attention? The first point I would raise here is that this is gliding over the, the, the so-called peace process that began in 1993 with the Oslo Accords and that led to the West Bank becoming a Palestinian, West Bank and parts of Gaza be, becoming the beginnings of a Palestinian state under that agreement. This was the classic land for peace agreement. And the, the idea was that by 1994, the Palestinian Authority, which was the government in the making, would take over administration of the West Bank and then eventually all of Gaza. And that's what you see in the green bits on this map. Now, this is 2005. That's just more than a decade since the Palestinian Authority came into being. Why does it not look like a solid green the way it would if you saw the original maps that this peace agreement had Del built? Zonutan. Well, because the Palestinian National Authority, the, the proto-state, the beginnings of a state, was a failed state before it became completely sovereign. It was a dictatorial regime. It was stealing from its own people. It was carrying out and encouraging, no. fostering, and paying for attacks on Israel from within its territory, so to the extent it had sovereignty. It was anarchic in many ways between rival police forces. Ir, nu, čia jie tą, I guess, reinforsina mano, aš net nežinau, iš kur aš tą išgirdau, bet, tipo, nu, tos nuogirdos vėlgi maždaug, ir čia maždaug jie, vat, pasakojo, vat, tos dalykus, kad, tipo, nu, jūs gali statyti ir galėjo statyti, bet niekad nestatės, visą laiką buvo arba tas vienas diktatorius išvagė, arba tada Hamas išvagė, arba dar kažkas prieš tai išvagė, nu, tipo, ar pasavėna kažkaip ir jie niekad negalėjo tos savo pastatyti, nes niekad, nu, jie... Yeah. Tai čia, man atrodo, pagrindinis argumentas dabar prieš tą two state solution, nes tipo tas two state solution niekad neveikia, nes niekad nenorėjo to. Jie nenori savo state tipo turėti, o jie nori žydus užmušti. Tai tipo, I don't know, čia, nu, aš perteikiu argumentą, kurį girdėjau, bet anyway. Just imagine what that looks like. Not rival armies, rival police forces, domestic conflict. So the, the West Bank that is taken over by the Palestinian Authority from 1994 onward is a catastrophic failed state basically before it becomes before it's even born it's failed and that is partly what israel does in response to that is it starts clawing back authority it starts bringing back its military it starts to collaborate uh, uh, to make sure that it doesn't completely implode and become a a worse threat than it already is so the the reason the palestinian authority isn't a solid green on this map 
is because it was not interested in becoming a state. It was interested in exploiting its own people and waging war on Israel. Now flip over to, so it's interesting this is 2005, because as you pointed out, in 2005, Israel decided, forget land for peace. We're, not, we're done with that. We tried that for a decade. It didn't, it wasn't really a promising strategy because they did that with Egypt and that sort of worked. Egypt entered into a cold peace with Israel. They did land for peace with parts of uh, where they were in, on the border with Lebanon, not a great arrangement. And they did it with the Palestinians, catastrophic, right? So what happens in 2005, the Israeli government says, forget it. Just, we're going to remove every last person, every last soldier who is in the Gaza Strip. We're going to hand it over to the Palestinian Authority, this failed state that I was describing. It's going to take over. And then a year later, with the blessing of the United States, they hold elections in the Palestinian Authority. So that's both Gaza and the West Bank. And the, this is when Hamas wins by a landslide. And now the Palestinian Authority and Hamas have a civil war literally a civil war in Gaza. And it was brutal. And if you think, if you think, you know, brutal, you need to go read about what they were doing to each other in the streets of Gaza, the, the street fighting and the, the horrific uh, conduct. The outcome of that is Hamas wins the Gaza Strip. So one way to look at this is the green is so, is so fragmented. It's, there's no land correct connection between the two. How would they ever build a state? That's part of what this map is trying to tell you. Look at how Israel's thwarted the Palestinian statehood. I think the truth is Israel made sacrificial steps towards enabling a Palestinian state. It blew up in its face. And the consequence is that there are now two Palestinian states, the Gaza Strip ruled by Hamas, which hates the Palestinian Authority, which is ruled by Fatah and the PLO. So in, the, in effect, it's, there's, the Palestinians have more quasi sovereignty than they ever did. Now it, it's, it's awful. No one, I think, would want to live there. No one would choose to emigrate there because of hey, um, such a terrible political environment, it's such a hostile uh, uh, environment for people who want to be free and produce. So this is... People are bet, bet vėl, tas pats argumentas netgi dabar pažiūrint. Two-state solution. Ar mes norim, kad būtų state, kurio tikslas yra žudyti civilius ir sait bomberius siūsti ir sunaikin žydus. Nu, tipo, nes dabar, at this point, kai Hamas atstovauja tą Palestiną, ar mes norim iš viso to? Koks čia per staitas būtų? What the fuck, kodėl mes turėtumėm padėti, nu, tipo, mes esu žmonės, kodėl norėtų pasaulis padėti kurti staitą, kurio pagrindinis tikslas būtų visus žydus išžudyti? Nu, tipo, what? Nes dabar Hamas dėka į, į, nu, I guess Hamas dėka į tokį, kaip, kaip čia tokią situaciją pastatė ir palesnėčius visus ir pats save, kad dabar, nu, žmojas net nenorėtų, turėtų jiems teito duot, net praignoruojant visą šitą, kad jiems buvo duota šansų ir nieko nepadarė, tai tipo, je. Yeah. O, ką aš padariu? Oh. So, in effect, it's, there's, the Palestinians have more quasi sovereignty than they ever did. Now, it, it's, it's awful. No one, I think, would want to live there. No one would choose to emigrate there because it's such a terrible political environment, it's such a hostile uh, uh, environment for people who want to be free and produce. So this is part of what... Yeah, but you must have to do it again. You must have to do it I guess. Yes, I'm sorry. The map is not telling you. And it's the reality of two rival Palestinian states that would destroy each other if they had the means to do it with embedded within Israel. And so you can... I have sympathy for the Israelis not knowing how to solve this because they tried land for peace. It didn't work the way they thought it would, but predictably it made things worse. But čia jau kažkokiais aš pritariu. Bet tipo, nu, tu negali tiesiog, go, je, 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 nepritariu tikėjai, mes kitas vaik genocidą padarom, nes... Bet... Ką daryt tada? Ir čia tas yra esminis klausimas. Ką tada daryt? Tipo... Bet kokioje demokratiniai šaly, nu, kokie idiotai be būtų tavo nu, žemėj, taip, nu, tavo valstybėj, taip, kokie ten netikėjimo bišpažintų, nu, tu toleruoji jos ir gyvena atkartų, taip, jis neturi sutart, jūs galite nes kito nekes, bet gyvena atsiog ir viskas. Ir jokių būdų negalit smurtauti prieš nieką ir, nu, taip veikia. Ir gan neblogai veikia, nors kai kurie čia iš mano žiūrovų ir panašiai spausti raudonus smigtukus, arba aš girdžiu, kad čia Vatnikus reikia jau žudyti vos ne visus, ten išvaryti iš Lietuvos mažai, kas nu ir yra tas ekstremizmas, jau tarkim. Bet ką daryti su žmonėm, kurie ne taip, kad nesutarė, ne tai, kad kaip pas mūsų Lietuvoje tiesiog, nu, vatnikai nepritarė, ar, ar norėtų, prorusiškai žinai yra, kad norėtų, kad čia Rusai ateitų. Bet jie literali noli nuo nu, vaikystės jos užaugino mokyklose, kur buvo paskojama, kad 
žydų yra, nu, nu arba kad tu esi blogėtis ir tave reikia užmušti. Arba kur religija visai pateisina, kad tu ten skerstum savo rankom uždėtum ir tipo, nu, tu jog žmogus niekad nenorės koegzistuoti su jais, arba labiau negrės pasitikėti jais. Tai, tai vėlgi, koks sprendimas, I, I have no idea. Kažkas jos priimti turėtų ir Izraelis tiesiog išvaro visus, nieks nenori jų. Nieks fucking nenori jų. Egiptas nenori, nieks nenori, sako, fuck you. Tai tipo, ką daryt? Actually, ką daryt? No idea. Nenori visi palesniečiai skersti žydų. Davai sek dialogą, nes aš negaliu kiekvienam čia, kur viskai nesigaudo, apie ką kalba vyksta, nu, žankos laikyti ir aiškinti. Now, the final thing I'll say about this map is that it prays, it has to be understood, at least in part, in the debate within this space between the pro-Israel and the, the pro-Palestinian side. And the pro-Israel side has really well-developed narratives about some of what we've been talking about, which some of which is true and, and I agree with, some of it is I, I don't agree with. And the, the map is calculated to respond to some of those talking points. And what are those talking points? One is that Israel is, has long been willing to trade land for peace. And you've been talking about that, Nikos. You've given some examples. And in the reality is the Palestinians, which is true, the Palestinians repeatedly reject those offers. And the, the, the big one you mentioned, the Clinton protocols, or par, par, the Clinton parameters, excuse me, from 2000, with, uh, this was the biggest offer they were ever off, uh, put on the table. And I think even people sympathetic to the Palestinian cause were surprised that their leadership walked away from it. Because, but I think what it reveals is there was no real interest in any kind of peace. Now, that idea that this map is supposed to show Israel was never interested in Palestinian statehood, has always been thwarting it, the map is supposed to undo that pro-Israel narrative. But the issue here to notice is that the people on the pro-Israel side responding to this, I think, are falling into a trap. I think that the trap is that it's right to try to do land for peace. I think that is a mistake. I think there, were, there was enough evidence early on to realize this was not the path forward. And each step they took in this direction made things so much worse for their security and for the lives and freedom of, their, of the Israeli population. So the idea that the answer to this map is, no, 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 Israel has been making offers and the Palestinians walked away. That is all true. It's important. It's revealing of the Palestinian goals. But it's also not the, the most important point here. The most important point here is that this is further evidence that the Palestinian cause was not really interested in building a free, prosperous society. And what the map is showing you is that okay, one way to read the map is that that, that's the collapse you can read off this final panel. Čia iš esmės, nu, viso to video argumentas išsamei, bet Palestina kaip šalis niekad neegzistavo, kas yra istoriškai teisingai, ir Palestina niekad nenorėjo egzistuoti kaip šalis. Taip o maždaug toks can't build a state when they're given the opportunity and billions of dollars in international aid to do so. So it's not as if they're bootstrapping. Even with all that, even with all the, the regional aid, they don't do it because it's not their goal. I think that's the, the, the most damning aspect. But yeah, I don't know if you can explain it. Like the situation, Louis C.K. is a stand up. Louis C.K. Allergies? Jo, jo, šitas. Uh, kaip aš dabar matau ir kaip panašu darosi is, įsprendimą kokį į ką pasaulis realiai dalys, tai man primena labai šitą Louis C.K. stand-upą. You know, you have your bad thoughts. Hopefully you, hopefully you do good things. Everybody has a competition in their brain of good thoughts and bad thoughts. Hopefully they win, the good thoughts win. For me, I always have both. I have like the thing I believe, the good thing. That's the thing I believe. And then there's this thing. And I don't believe it, but it is there. It's always this thing and then this thing. It's become a category in my brain that I call, of course, but maybe. I'll give you an example. Okay, like, of course, of course, children who have nut allergies need to be protected. Of course. We have to segregate their food from nuts, have their medication available at all times, and anybody who manufactures or serves food needs to be aware of deadly nut allergies. Of course. But maybe. 
maybe if touching a nut kills you, you're supposed to die. <laughs> of course not. Of course not. Of course not. Jesus. I have a nephew who has that. I'd be devastated if something happened to him. But maybe, <laughs> maybe, if we all just do this for one year, we're... Va čia, iš esmės tas. Iš esmės, kaip aš matau tą, visą įmanomą, kad po tiek fucked up istorijų su Palestina, ten tėra iš Palestinašiai, kad pasaulis arba Amerika ar panašiai šitą problemą gali spręsti būtent šitaip. O jo, genocidas yra labai blogai ir mes kolektyvinės bausmės nepalaikom ir labai blogai. Bet jeigu mes nusisuksim mėnesių kitam ar ten metukams, Palestinos problema tiesiog bus išspręsta. Tiesiog užsimerksim, nežiūrėsim. Ir aš nežinau, čia tokia joda koreliacija, taip kaip aš matau, kaip galimai pasaulis gali žiūrėti šitą, nu, ne pasaulis, gal nu, to šalis, kur proizraelietiškas ir panašiai, tipo, kad Palestina toks tiek daug problemų sukelia ir sprendimo būdai niekad jokie nesuveikia, tipo, nu, taip pat grinai žiūri. Ir kad gal tiesiog vat, užsimerksim genocidų vykdomui ir po šiek tiek laiko nebebus palestiniečių, žinai, iš viso. Ir problemos nėra. Čia toks grinai išluisi, kai toks not allergies, bet čia su palestinai, kas tokia užsimerkėm, nežiūrėm ir išnyksta problema. Aš tokį tarimą turiu, kad taip gali pasaulis tiesiog reaguoti ir tokį sentimentą jaustas, nu, kur Izraelio pusėj daugma aš. This is evidence, yes, but not of Israel's perfidy or dishonesty or lack of will for peace. It's the evidence of the Palestinian cause and its view that there is no strip of land that you could legitimately call Israel, that they want it all and they want no one else living there who is not uh, a faithful Muslim. That's basically the Hamas view. And, and that has to hold for eternity. So that the river to the sea, the chanting you hear in the streets in Europe and North America and on campuses, that, that's an echo of the Hamas charter that tells you that the land of Palestine is forever in Allah's uh, path. You can never take it away from it and nothing but Allah's way on that land is legitimate. So to me, that's the real story that needs to be understood. And that's what this map is trying to prevent you from understanding by, by ripping this whole issue out of an important philosophic context. One last comment for the land for peace uh, thing. Uh, after 1967, after the military triumph of Israel, we have the historically perhaps unprecedented fact that the winner of a war is chasing diplomatically the losers of the war saying hey come and make peace let's come and have peace and what is the reaction of the arabs the three knows in the the three no in the infamous now uh, khartoum uh, summit where the arab states gather and they say no peace no negotiation no recognition with israel so hopefully we've given you some context about these maps again these maps is the propaganda meme that never dies i, I first saw it in the early 2000s in the first years of uh, internet becoming more widespread and i still see it almost every day on twitter anyway hopefully we're going to have more episodes uh, setting light to okay Soprato.